you too can experience this improved metabolism, which benefits every organ and system in your body. You can fix it for good if you do it the right way. A broken metabolism wreaks havoc on your entire body, and I'm going to tell you how to fix it. But first, what is metabolism? We throw the word around a lot, but we rarely officially kind of define it. Metabolism is a process. It's simply how efficiently your body can take energy from food and turn it into a usable form of energy that your body can use to do stuff. Move a muscle, think a thought, build a neurotransmitter, you name it, anything and everything. What I want to share with you today is how often this process breaks down in multiple areas of your body, especially if your stress response system is broken. Now, if you remember from my other videos, a broken stress response is what we refer to as adrenal fatigue for lack of a better term. Metabolism starts with the act of eating food. Now, ideally, we're eating real food, which is a very small percentage of what's available to us in our supermarket. Think about shopping just the perimeter of that supermarket, right, where the real food is, meats and eggs and some dairy and fruits and veggies. If you can picture it growing or grazing, then it's real food. So when we eat this real food, our digestive process begins. The purpose of digestion is to break down these big hunks of food that we put into our mouth into smaller parts as it moves down the digestive tract, eventually breaking things down into the three most basic components, protein, fat, carbohydrate. But those components are still, they're too big to be absorbed as nutrients, so your digestive process breaks them down even further. Protein breaks down into individual amino acids, glycine and alanine and tryptophan and some others. And those amino acids, they're like building blocks of those proteins, like bricks in a wall. Carbohydrates uh, and the starches get broken down even to smaller things as well, like simple sugars, like glucose, fructose, galactose, and some others. Fats get broken down into a similar way, into nutrients like cholesterol, free fatty acids, glycerol. And yes, cholesterol is a nutrient, and it is essential and vital to our health and well-being. It's not the villain it's made out to be. Now, from there, they're absorbed into the cells and then transported to other cells and into the organs and of the body, like the liver, the brain, the muscles, everywhere. All these cells need all those building blocks to do work on a cellular level. The cells then have to transport these nutrients, right? The amino acids, the sugars, the fatty acids. Once they get into the cell, the cells use them to do all the stuff that they have to do. Now, let's look at what happens when to those components once they're into the cell themselves. We're going to focus on one particular organelle in the cell called the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria are the little energy producers in all of our cells. They take these nutrients and they're responsible for converting them into this universal form of energy that we call ATP. So for those of you that geek out about this stuff, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. One adenosine molecule is bound by three or triphosphates. Our energy is actually created in the breaking of those phosphate bonds and the conversion of ATP into ADP, which is an adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates instead of three. So this process has within it multiple steps, requires numerous cofactors and a variety of enzymes to make it all work together. You can think of it like a factory or like a manufacturing plant. The supervisors of this mitochondrial function are numerous, but primarily your adrenal gland and your thyroid gland and the hormones they produce, cortisol and thyroxine. The challenge here is that during stress physiology, which is where adrenal fatigue patients kind of spend most of their time, the mitochondria, that manufacturing plant itself, it's damaged by free radicals, what we call oxidative stress. In addition, stress physiology compromises the adrenals and the thyroid glands and the ability of those supervisors, cortisol and thyroxine, to do their job effectively. Okay, so if we zoom back out and take more of a thousand foot view of this process, when your metabolism is broken, you simply can't create energy efficiently. This is gonna to lead to fatigue and inflammation and weight gain and brain fog and, and numerous other, other issues. This dysfunction contributes to a global shutdown in the body's cellular process that allow us to live our life, think our thoughts, move muscles, digest food, fight infections, all of it. So how do we fix it? The first thing we have to do is to get you out of stress physiology. We have to tip that seesaw of your physiology away from fight or flight, which causes this free radical production, the oxidative stress, and all that wear and tear on your mitochondria. And then we need to get you into a state of rest and digest, which allows the cells to then heal and repair. We need also to support and balance your HPA axis, which controls your adrenals in the production of cortisol, as well as all of its functions at a cellular level. Saliva testing helps us to understand a little better how to approach the balancing of your HPA axis and your adrenals. 
then we have to reduce the oxidative stress and the free radical accumulation that's going on in your body, which is uh, stimulating your antioxidant capacity. We also want to provide you with additional antioxidants, like your fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E, minerals like selenium, zinc, magnesium, and other substances that are antioxidants like resveratrol, vitamin C, and a few others. During stress physiology, all of those antioxidants are compromised and become deficient. We also have to start the process of healing the cells in the mitochondria, especially the outer cell membranes. Those outer cell membranes are responsible for the transport of nutrients in and out of the cell and in the mitochondria. This process is also responsible for the cell's ability to create and break down receptors for our various hormones and neurotransmitters and immune-mediated chemical messengers that all combine to help to control that cellular function. During treatment of this broken metabolism, we need to optimize the quality of the fatty acids that compose, that make up these cell membranes so they can do their job. And that treatment primarily entails omega-3 fatty acids. Consume it in food, as well as often omega-3 fatty acid supplements like fish oil, cod liver oil. The process of optimizing omega-3s in our cells is connected with reduced all-cause morbidity and mortality. It literally helps everything. Now, there's numerous mitochondrial support supplements out there on the market today. They provide cofactors like CoQ10 and magnesium and other nutrients in that mitochondrial manufacturing process uh, of ATP and energy. But I find these supplements... They're rarely needed when we accomplish all the healing processes that I just described. Now, as we have success with these efforts, step-by-step, incrementally, the mitochondrial function and the cellular function improves. Organ function improves. Overall energy capacity improves. And this is what leads to an incremental increase in energy and clarity of thinking and stamina, even improved mood. In the beginning, these improvements, they're fleeting. They're glimpses. And pretty soon, we start to feel like our old selves again. You too can experience this improved metabolism, which benefits every organ and system in your body. You can fix it for good if you do it the right way. Treat it at its source from the root cause of a broken stress physiology. All my best.